So today being the uh, 6th of May, we're going to go over the weekly data, but it may not be as meaningful. I think what may be more meaningful for us right now is to quickly go through the numbers for April because you've all seen the numbers in April and we've already published the market update flyers for you guys to use. And now let's just take a deep dive into what all these numbers actually mean. So there's a couple of things I want you to remember. If you look at April 2023 to April 2020, number of sales are slightly down. Average prices are, however, slightly up. But in the backdrop of that dialogue, you have to remember that last April, this time, our interest rates were 4.5% versus us sitting at 5% at this moment. So what you have to remember is that last June is when we saw the first quarter percent tick upwards, and that's when the demand started coming down. We started seeing the number of sales actually start coming down. But up until that point, it was an upwards trajectory. So year over year, Despite a half percent interest rate increase, worse economic times theoretically, I mean, year over year for sure, prices still remain stable and in fact are up year over year. That should tell you something in a really clear sort of way. Looking at the number of listings and the year over year change, if you look at the active listings, we're up by about 74%. So what this tells us is that a lot of the sellers who were sitting on the sideline last year waiting to see what was happening and now have now entered the market in a really meaningful way. So year over year, we went from 10,000 listings to over 18,000 listings this April compared to last April. So buyers theoretically have more options. Despite that, prices haven't come down. They've remained relatively stable, which tells you that we're still very much in a strong seller's market. And I'll run the numbers with you like I do every week to show you where we kind of ended up for the month of April, as well as what we're seeing in the first couple of days of May. So this is what you need to keep in mind as far as the backdrop is concerned. Now, I've been looking at what's going on with the U.S. economy. And what's interesting about the U.S. economy is that per capita GDP in quarter one is pretty strong. Ours is flat and probably likely down. And we've had six consecutive quarterly declines in Canada, which is a little bit interesting. In US, the GDP in quarter one grew at a slower pace at around 1.6%, but consumer spending on services were strong. Labor markets are adding jobs, unemployment are at a historical low, and the economic backdrop and reacceleration in inflation is interesting. It's very interesting to see that. So the conversation that we've been having is that if the Bank of Canada drops their rate, it's going to devalue theoretically the Canadian dollar, which is not good for us because we take a lot of imports from the southern side of this, from the southern side, from the U.S. itself. Now, I posted the RBC podcast on this, and I would recommend all of you go back and you check out that podcast. It's very powerful. It's 10 minutes. It's called the 10 minute take. There's a lot of little golden nuggets in there. But the key things to keep take away from that that I took away was that Canadian inflation is trending lower, and so we're expecting the rates to drop in June. Starting in June is what they're expecting. And the expectation is by the end of the year, we would have seen 100 basis points decline, meaning 1%. So from 5% to 4% is what they're predicting by the end of the year, starting in June, despite the U.S. economy going the direction it's going and them probably not decreasing their rates because their inflation is going higher again. So the question is, will the Bank of Canada be influenced by the U.S.? According to RBC, imports would become more expensive, but because of the weaker Canadian dollar and the softer demand backdrop, we would likely see neutralization. So although the value of the dollar would be a little bit weaker, there's still a lower demand for a lot of products and services right now because it's very tough from an economic perspective. So having the Canadian dollar be slightly weaker in a lower inflation and lower demand backdrop likely means that we will continue to diverge, but we'll continue to decrease rates at our level once we start decreasing them, hopefully to that 1% range. So that's the expectation. So this is what we've seen year over year. Listings are way up. Prices are exactly where they were, in fact, a little bit higher. And if you look at the market optics, so I'll pull up the numbers that we look at week over week. If you look at the freehold side of things, I'll show you the chart here so you can visualize it first. Always keep in mind that the number of sales that have been reported are probably still lingering. They're still coming in. So it looks like they might be diverging a little bit. But my expectation is, is that you'll see this increase like we do every single week when we report these numbers. 
But even if we take these numbers at face value, number of listings is 2,113, number of sales is 593. That puts us at three point, say six months of inventory, 3.56 months of inventory. Zero to four months of inventory is a seller's market. Five to six is a balanced market. Six plus months of inventory is a buyer's market. So we're nowhere near a buyer's market. It has continued to remain a seller's market. And if these numbers are in fact true, which I don't think they are, it's still a seller's market, even despite all of those things. Now, week over week, if you start looking at what we're seeing in terms of the average ask to sell ratio. So let me quickly pull up the right metrics here. Last 12 months weekly, if you look at the average ask to sell ratio, we've been pretty steady right over the one range since, you know, what is this now? First week of February. So we've been seeing properties sell over asking week over week. Now, the analytic that I'm very interested in is the relist analytic. So what I did here is I pulled both 2023 and 2024 relist analytics. So in 2023, April, you can see that in April, about 13% of the properties that were listed were terminated and listed again, meaning you probably had somebody who set up an offer presentation date. It didn't work out rather than just do a price change. They canceled the listing and they put it up again. That's why Treb has started giving us this report so we can kind of understand what's happening from that perspective. Now you look at April 2020, that number is up by about 21%. Now, if you ask me why I think this is, this is my own opinion, I think it's because a lot of agents are having difficulty pricing out properties right now. Everything is shifting on a weekly basis and so dramatically that when you look at the data points, it's kind of hard to say, okay, pinpoint to a seller, this is exactly what the property is going to be worth because there's so many factors in flux at this stage. So with that, we're at about a 22% relist year over year versus the previous year at 13%. So that's an interesting analytic to look at. Now, closing these out and going back to where we were, average ask to sell ratio continues to remain stable. Average days on market is down week over week. So we're sitting at 13. This now puts us close to where we were first week of July in 2023, right? It's, it's very interesting to see the direction it's going in. And I suspect as we enter the summer market, it's going to continue to go down that path, especially if we do see that rate drop in June. If that happens, I'm willing to bet that a lot of buyers that are sitting on the fence are now going to jump to the market. And that's why I'm saying, if you look at the difference in terms of the rates and what it's going to cost you in a mortgage, it's a couple hundred bucks, a quarter percent or a half percent increase is a couple hundred dollars. But if you wait for everybody else to run to the market at the same time that your buyers are going to run to the market, you might see significant increases in the actual average price. So although you're saving a little bit of money on the mortgage payment itself, you're probably going to overpay in a very competitive bidding environment where you're going to see prices go up, more offers, which means fewer conditions and due diligence, which is going to put your clients in a funny situation. So if somebody's keen on buying, I still think this is the right time to do it. In terms of average sale price week over week, I mean, it's still hovering around the same. So we're at about 1.4 million on average in the GTA. And again, I think the data is still filling in. So I'm, not, I'm looking at this with a grain of salt, as should you. In terms of the condo side of things, so condo side is not very different. From the week over week perspective, first couple of days of May, we're sitting at about 4.4 months of inventory. So that tells you that we're sitting in or entering a very soft balanced market but the condo market seen its ups and downs as well so i suspect that these numbers are also going to fill in this week and by next week this number should be a little bit higher which is going to take us back into a seller's market so is now the time to get a good deal on a condo probably once the rates start shifting i suspect that both the condo market and the freehold market are going to start taking off again and I think it's a matter of time. Does anybody have any questions or anything to add to that? Okay, guys, check out your profiles in the learning suite. We've added a bunch of events. I'll quickly show you where to find that in case you don't know what I'm talking about. I see some new faces on the call. So when you log into the learning suite, you simply go up to the profile section. And here you've got all of the things that are happening. I've added the Benjamin Tall market update. Don't miss this. You should be attending this. Tomorrow... We've also, not tomorrow, sorry, on the 8th of May, we've got Curtis Glenn walkthrough. There's a handful of seats still available if somebody's interested. So we've got a jam-packed week with lots of training and development. Please RSVP, and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys at some of these events. Take care, everybody. Bye for now.